Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by black body radiation. You should then be able to describe how the temperature of an object depends on the balance between radiation absorbed and radiation emitted. And this is for triple physics students only. In a previous video we looked at how infrared radiation is absorbed and emitted from different surfaces. We saw that matte black surfaces are the best absorbers and the best emitters of infrared radiation. Now you need to understand that all objects, no matter what temperature, emit and absorb infrared radiation. However, a hotter object will emit more infrared radiation in a given time, compared with a cooler object. Now I'm showing you here a piece of hot metal, and this brings us to a key fact. Both the wavelength and the intensity of radiation depend on the temperature of the object. Very hot objects emit shorter wavelength radiation than cooler objects, and we can see that with this graph. As the object gets hotter, it emits more short wavelength radiation, and that's why very hot objects produce visible light, for example a piece of very hot metal. The intensity of the radiation also increases at higher temperatures. Okay, we're going to look now at the idea of black body radiation. A perfect black body absorbs all of the radiation incident on it. No radiation is reflected and no radiation is transmitted, in other words, passed through. Remember that an object that absorbs radiation well will also emit radiation well. So that means that a perfect black body is also the best possible emitter of radiation. Now if an object is warmer than its surroundings, then it will emit more radiation than it absorbs, and its temperature will decrease. A good example is this cup of hot coffee. If an object is cooler than its surroundings, then it will absorb more radiation than it emits, and this will cause its temperature to increase. A good example are these burgers on a barbecue. And if an object is at a constant temperature, then it's absorbing radiation at the same rate as it's emitting radiation. Okay, we're going to finish now by looking at how radiation affects the temperature of the Earth. Remember that absorbing or emitting radiation are the only ways that the Earth can gain or lose energy. The Sun emits short wavelength radiation, such as visible light and ultraviolet. This radiation travels to the Earth. Some of that radiation is simply reflected, for example by clouds. The remaining radiation can then be absorbed by the surface of the Earth. This causes the temperature of the Earth to increase and the Earth now emits infrared radiation back into space. However, some of the energy of the infrared is trapped by greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, for example carbon dioxide. Now human activity is increasing the levels of greenhouse gases, and this means that more heat energy is trapped in the atmosphere, and less is radiated into space. I should point out that many factors can affect how much energy is radiated from the Earth, for example the amount of cloud cover. Cloudy nights tend to be warmer than clear nights. That's because clouds can reflect infrared back to the Earth and prevent it from being radiated into space. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on how radiation is emitted and absorbed in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.